Hi folks, welcome to MTS. Today we have a Lionel Northern Pacific Lion Chief Plus GP7. Uh, item number is 38824. Uh, it's got a shimmy at high speed, and it's a poor runner and at slow speed, and the volume's too high. As you can see, the engine is pulsing at slow speed and even stops at certain points. So, uh, so much so that I have to throttle up in order to get it going. And it also shimmies at higher speeds. Uh, I'm not too sure it shows up uh, on video, so I put my phone on the locomotive to try and show the uh, the shimmy. <laughs> uh, you can see the vibration uh, in the frame. We're going to see if we can smooth that out. Could be a number of issues. Uh, we're going to start uh, by removing the shell, uh, then inspecting the motors. Uh, then we'll remove the motors from the trucks. This will allow us to move the trucks freely on the mat to see if uh, there's any wobble or binding. And finally, we'll check the worm gears uh, on the motors, see if there's any kind of uh, vibration or uh, movement on that as well. Uh, we'll give everything a good uh, lubrication. Uh, then get it back together, hopefully fixing the issue. So here we're going to go ahead and follow all of these wires uh, down to the main board here. I'm just going to unplug so we can separate the body from the uh, chassis. Hopefully you guys saw where all those were connected. <laughs> So as stated, now we're going to um, remove the motors from the trucks. And just like a traditional F3 unit, it's just a single screw. We're just going to undo that, unscrew that where it separates from the base of the motor. It should come apart, and it does. Okay, so now I can spin the wheels freely. slight gap that forms in between this wheel and that truck. But I don't think that's enough to justify the shim that we're seeing. Okay, let's look down inside the truck. And there we go. I'm going to move that motor out of the way. I'm just going to look down the worm gear and see if there's anything, any teeth missing. We're looking for teeth missing or anything along that, that end. I'm not 
not seeing anything. So it moves pretty freely. We'll spin the flywheel here. So nothing, nothing's obvious there. Let me put this back together. <clears throat> it's got a pretty good amount of lubrication inside of it. Now the one thing I am noticing when I'm, there's a there's a small space where that wire is supposed to feed through. That's going to the connect the uh, the connection, the roller connection. If that's not seated correctly, that could possibly make an issue. It feels like it's seated correctly. Tighten that screw back down. We're gonna run, spin the flywheel again. It's spinning freely. Um, so not really binding up, not feeling anything. So I'm assuming now we're in the front area here. Let's see if we can just spin that, see what that does. Hmm. And it's spinning freely, that's just weird. There's no binding in it. this mm, that looks good too I'm not seeing any issue there I'm gonna check the teeth again in the front truck So evaluating what we have on the front truck, there is a, I'm noticing where there's a difference in this rear axle. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna leave this disconnected. I'm gonna put it on the train layout with just this one motor running and see if that isolates the issue um, and go from there. So I'm gonna run that on a piece of straight track out on the layout. In doing so, I'm just gonna run a zip tie around this truck on the back just to kind of hold it in place. See what happens. So folks, uh, looking at the unit again, I definitely see we've got a bent, either a bent axle on this one, or a bent wheel. But you can definitely see there's where it's together at the most point. Let me zoom you in. I see if I can see if I can show this a little better. So. This wheel, look at the gap between the frame and the wheel. I'm going to spin this. So I think it's definitely in this axle. Um, I'm going to take this apart and uh, get my wheel puller. We'll see if we can't determine if it's the axle or the wheel itself um, and go from there. Okay, first we're going to remove the zip tie. Looks like this is all one assembly. So we have the wire that goes to the coupler, and then the other one goes to the roller connection here. And uh, this is the wheel 
truck covers are actually stamped to this metal frame and I'm only seeing one screw right here so we're going to see if we can move that, remove that screw oh yeah it's already starting to uh, be pretty loose there so Trying to figure out though how in the world. Yeah, this it's actually similar to an old F3 style frame. Um, this wire, there's a groove. Zoom me in on that. So there's a groove for your wire that runs right. Little little groove that runs right there. I was trying to figure out how that would have oh there we go actually I can remove that middle gear just move it out a little bit there we go I wonder if I put a, z z a drill on that so what I'm going to use or attempt to use here is this is just a polishing wheel here See if we make that spin. See what it looks like. Yeah, I think we found it. Okay. Take a wheel puller. That's awful solid. You wouldn't think that would bend. I have a feeling our, our issues in the wheel itself. It's actually, I don't know if you can see, you can see where it had worn more on one side. I think our wheel's out of balance. See that? This is magnetic as well. Yeah, I think that's... I don't think it's the axle. So here's my thought. I, I checked the wheel. Wheel's actually fine. I didn't see any issue with it at all. Laid it on a flat surface and there was no gaps. There was no raises. I tapped around just to make sure that it didn't, it was solid, right? Um, on this axle, there's a lip. My theory is that if I press this on, and it's magnetic, um, but what I'm, one, what I'm thinking is if I can press this and just make sure that it's pressed all the way to that lip, in theory, um, it shouldn't have any kind of, it shouldn't be out of balance. Um, now what I did do, like I said, it is magnetic. As I was going through here, there were little, little pieces of metal. Uh, so I just took a paper towel and spun the axle just to get the pieces of metal all completely off of there. Um, so we're going to try that. I'm going to put it a nice, uh, coat of some lubrication, uh, my red and tacky, and, uh, just put that over inside the truck assembly and inside on around the gear itself uh, and then we're going to just go press that in using a vise and see if that fixes the issue i'll bring you back after all of that okay 
that is stopped, but it's moving freely. I can't move it. I can't tighten it up anymore. So we're going to loosen it up. Move the vice out of the way. That's where it's the furthest apart. So what I'm gonna do is actually see if I can't squeeze these two ends together. better we're just eyeballing this I know it's not scientific at all I'm just giving it just a little bit of pressure with the vise thing I don't want is to make that one out of balance but I think as long as that wheel the gear gear wheel is against the frame then I think we're okay there it's just this one wheel I think that's got it. So I've got a piece of track. I'm just gonna kind of pick this all up <laughs> and moving it along the track here, back and forth. And I'm just based off of feel, I think it's pretty balanced. I mean, the real test is just gonna be putting it all back together now and seeing if that makes a difference on the layout. Okay, so we got it all back together. That was a interesting <laughs> experience. There's that track that, or that groove that that wire, the hot wire is supposed to maintain. Uh, that took a little bit to uh, get that in place. I basically had to actually lay it flat, put a screwdriver in between the motor and the mat uh, just to kind of hold it in place, get all the slack that I possibly could, uh, and then just kind of marry it together and then uh, get all my insulators insulator washers and my screw to connect that back in place and uh, then put the motor back in place so we're going to uh, take it over to the layout now and see if that fixed our issue <laughs> fingers crossed So as you can see, uh, the issue is not in the front motor. I don't know if you could tell what I was doing was actually lifting up um, each end of the locomotive to see if I could feel where 
the main issue was and is definitely in this rear motor um, I'm not sure if it's a flywheel or a, something's bent in the motor itself we're gonna take that back apart and uh, basically just kind of do the same thing we did with the front uh, motor here uh, but it, the mo front motor is working fine I, I mean it, it was nice and smooth when I lifted up the back it went forward and reverse no issue however the back motor when I lifted the front of the locomotive up it you could tell it was just having some major issues it wouldn't grab uh, I had to really uh, throttle up in order for the locomotive to even start making any kind of movement so my issue is definitely in this back motor we're gonna take it apart and see what we got and same thing just remove that scent sent that uh, one screw there thing is when I'm spinning the motor there's actually no there's no resistance at all Okay, I'm going to take this apart just like we did the other one. Mm, boy, that's tight. Let that come loose. wire from the groove just like I did on the front one. Hmm, a piece of string in the gear. Same thing, I'm gonna remove this rear wheel. Somebody's been in here before. Clean that off a little bit. You can still see there's like little bitty pieces of metal filament there. And because of the magnet, it's not coming off. Now this one gets just gets better and better. So what I just noticed was there's a break in the wire that was feeding in that little groove that went around there. So let me raise this up, see if I can let you guys see that. There's there's the there's the break in the wire right there. Right there. Um, so now, um, if I got my soldering iron heated up, I'm going to desolder from here. We're going to replace, um, I don't know if I want to replace the wire or if I just put, I'll probably just put a piece of uh, heat shrink tubing around it just to keep it protected and put that back. Um, anyway, I mean, Another issue. <laughs> okay, so the heat shrink tubing is not going to work either because that uh, it, the wire with the heat shrink won't fit into the groove. So I found a, another piece of. I'm just going to completely replace that wire, and that'll fit in there. So uh, we'll be good to go after that. Just a lot of <laughs> kind of frustrated. A lot of. Uh, process of elimination here so while we're waiting on that I know this is the gonna be my replacement wire here so I'm just gonna go ahead and feed that one back through the way I just undid the other one so I'm just gonna go through this little zip tie and then it feeds right down through the back side of this uh, motor mount like that and that goes through the chassis goes through the motor
motor area. through the end hole and this is you can always recognize where you're wanting to go um, the hole where you want to feed your wire is the one right next to the threaded hole um, that screws the uh, the roller contact roller in place so we're going to do that make sure remember your plastic insulator Then we're going to go ahead and strip the little end of this off. I'm going to put a little solder on this first. So here's, the, we'll put the flux on. Just kind of pre-solder it. quick double check make sure I got everything in place so we've got the wire fed all the way through oh aha. we have to remember the there's a small piece of heat shrink tubing that's going to go on the very end of this just to cover where it connects to the to the roller Flux on here. Flux on the, there we go. More solder on the end of that. There we go. That's a nice solid hook. Slide that over top of there. There we go. Quick heat. And then I'll now fill it back in there. that up and there we go that's just just almost factory like that there we go now we'll come back over on this side and get this again we still have to remove the old wire here where it connects into the what goes to the motherboard Placement wires in place. All right, back to the original issue. Put some red and tacky around 
the axle. And put some inside the bearings as well. position and we're going to press it on you guys have already seen this I'm not going to show you that again okay you got to put in the insulator washers here one goes on top of the truck where I got my wire run so we're just gonna try and keep this together as much as possible I think we're good there All the way around, we got our other insulator washer here and the screw. Before I tighten it down too further, too much further, I just want to make sure that it is in the groove. the Madonna music okay we got a good connection good flat all right now we'll put the hook put the motor attach that back to the truck assembly spinning freely and the truck is spinning as well get her back to the layout okay see what we got I think that did it, running as smooth as silk, at the lowest possible setting. Yeah, I can definitely live with this, much better. In conclusion, uh, determined that the root cause of the shimmy was that the wheels uh, were not seated correctly on the axles. Pressing the wheels to the flange on the axles corrected the issue, and now the locomotive operates smoothly at slow speeds. In the last part of the video, I'll run the locomotive a few times around the layout. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you down the line.